presence over Oakland Beach. Visibility is still not impacted by the fog or drizzle. Temperatures between 50 and 55 heading out the door this morning, actually rising a few degrees over the last couple of hours. So it's a warmer start by about 5 to 15 degrees here in southern New England compared to yesterday morning. Radar's dry right now. We do have a quick shower in the forecast around the time of the evening commute. Temperatures going, though, from the upper 50s at 9 a.m. to near 70 this afternoon, a milder day, but there's some cooler air behind these showers that'll fill in overnight tonight and for your Friday. That'll last into the upcoming weekend, too. We'll talk all about that. My full future cast is coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, we want to go out to the roads, get a check on the pinpoint traffic. Here's Melissa Sardelli. Well, we got some really nice conditions out there. If you're getting ready to head out of the house this morning, check it on our maps. You're not seeing delays really anywhere this morning. Heading into Providence, early start to your day. Nothing that will really slow you down. And if you're making your way up to Boston this morning from Pawtucket, even Providence, all the way up 95, you got pretty much a clear shot. Some slight slowdowns right before you jump on 93, but other than that, you're looking great. And that's just people just slowing down to make the transition. 195 over by the split, same conditions here. You're looking really great. Very light traffic conditions and checking on some of your drive times this morning. 57 minutes, but second to Boston right now. 53 minutes taunting to Boston and no troubles, of course, on 295 at this time. Live with your pinpoint traffic, Melissa Sardelli, Eyewitness News. Breaking overnight, two Boston police officers rushed to the hospital after a late night shootout with a suspect. And both officers said to be in extremely critical condition. We've learned the suspect is dead this morning. We want to go right to Eyewitness News reporter Brian Yukono. He's monitoring developments from our breaking news center. Good morning. At 6 o'clock now, we know those police officers were responding to a domestic situation. The police commissioner on the scene just this morning saying the suspect there armed with a firearm and a ballistic vest at the time. I want to show you the scene from just this morning outside the hospital. Two officers in surgery for multiple gunshot wounds. Nine other officers treated for minor physical injuries and emotional stress. That was at Tufts Medical Center. Again, this was a domestic call on Gladstone Street in what the mayor calls a quiet neighborhood. After an exchange of gunfire with police in which those two officers were shot, the suspect was then neutralized, to quote the commissioner, and is now dead. The injured officers were then pulled to a safe area. New now at 6, the commissioner describes what was heard on the radio. We heard officers screaming on the radio. Um, um, a 303, which signifies shots fired, and an officer uh, down. The officers were screaming, officer down. Keep these officers in, in your prayers tonight, uh, and hopefully... Um, Hopefully they'll be back on the street soon. Now the commissioner also says other officers used their bare hands to try to stop the bleeding until those wounded officers could be taken to the hospital at 6.30 this morning. We'll hear from the district attorney and what his office is now doing in the investigation there. In the breaking news center, Brian Nicono, Eyewitness News. Today marks one month since the state launched its online benefit system, and it's been a rough start for the United Health Infrastructure Project. A Target 12 consumer investigation shows state officials ignored warnings from the federal government that the system was not ready to go. Governor Raimondo tells us the state launched the project after receiving a letter from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services authorizing the state to connect to their federal system. But she claims she was not informed of concerns raised by the U.S. Food and Nutritional Service, which oversees food stamps. That agency said the system was inadequate. So will anyone be held accountable? Uh, my whole team. I mean, this has to get fixed. It has to get fixed quickly. And if not, there will be consequences. We've also learned the state is not yet completing weekly reports as required by the federal government on the new system. Spokesperson says the first weekly report, which was due more than two weeks ago, now being finalized. More local coverage now. Providence police investigating their second shooting in as many nights. Now community leaders are going to be meeting later today to try to address this troubling trend. Eyewitness News reporter Julian Pixetto has some new information this morning from police. Good morning. Well, I spoke to Providence police about an hour ago. They tell me a 20-year-old man was shot in the face last night. It happened just after 10 p.m. in the area of 18 Laban Street, which is near Plainfield Street and Hartford Avenue. Police tell us the man was shot once in the face, but his injury is not life-threatening. He's currently recovering at Rhode Island Hospital. Police also say they have not made any arrests, nor did they find a weapon. And the situation is, of course, still under investigation. Last night's shooting comes just one day after a double shooting in Providence. As we first told you yesterday on Eyewitness News this morning, two teenagers were shot in the city's east side Tuesday night. An eyewitness tells us an 18-year-old man was shot in the head at Billy Taylor Park. And police say a second victim was also taken to the hospital. In light of these most recent 
shootings. The community is gathering to speak out against the violence. Now, some community members attribute the recent spike in crime to the end of summer programs, such as the Midnight Basketball League. There will be a rally at 3 o'clock this afternoon at Billy Taylor Park to address the recent violence in the city. Live in the studio, Julianne Pixoto, Eyewitness News. Here's the latest now on that deadly plane crash in Connecticut. Main Street in East Hartford is back open, but questions still remain about what happened. Federal investigators say the crash was no accident, but they will not confirm an Associated Press report that it was a suicide. All possibilities, including terrorism, still all being investigated. The FBI has searched the apartment of the student pilot who was at the controls when the plane went down. They have not said what, if anything, they have uncovered. The man suspected of plotting a bomb attack in Germany is now dead. Officials say the 22-year-old Syrian man killed himself in his prison cell. An investigation now underway into exactly what happened. He was arrested earlier this week after authorities raided his apartment where they found materials to make a bomb. Investigators believe he was planning to carry out an attack on an airport in Berlin. New video this morning from the U.S. Navy. Officials say they, they carried out missile strikes on three radar posts in Yemen. All three targets have reportedly been destroyed. Strikes come after two missiles were unsuccessfully launched at an American destroyer off the coast of Yemen earlier this week. In campaign 2016 coverage now, Donald Trump denying some new allegations that he groped and kissed two women decades ago. The incidents are detailed in a report by the New York Times. A woman working in Trump Tower says that the billionaire kissed her on the mouth after introducing herself to him for the first time. Another woman says that he reached up her skirt while sitting next to him on a flight 30 years ago. Trump is threatening legal action against the Times unless it retracts the report and issues an apology. Hillary Clinton's campaign released this statement saying, quote, this disturbing story sadly fits everything we know about the way Donald Trump has treated women. The report suggests that he lied on the debate stage and that the disgusting behavior he bragged about in the tape are more than just words. More coverage you can count on coming up on Eyewitness News this morning. We'll tell you how do you uh, how you can win tickets to Tom Brady's first game in Foxborough this weekend, while also helping out a good cause. And later, Amazon coming under fire for a new background check policy that critics say is costing people their jobs. Take a close look at the Toyota Fall Savings Event, and you'll see that the payments are really, really small. Get a really small payment with zero for 72 on an Avalon, including hybrids. Hurry, the savings end October 31st. Toyota, let's go places. Visit Sam's Inn on West Shore Road, Warwick, and enjoy great home-style cooking. Daily lunch specials, a sandwich, and a cup of soup with french fries is just $6.95. And a perfect place for private parties. Sam's Inn, 2227 West Shore Road, Warwick. Before going to see Dr. Leonard, my, my hair loss was, was getting pretty bad. So I, I scheduled a consultation, and... I knew right off the bat that, that he was the right doctor for me. Everything just ran smoothly. Everybody made me feel super comfortable. It's a night and day difference as far as my hair. And being able to wake up in the morning and really fix my hair and like the way it looks, I can do whatever I want. I could grow it out. I can do it shorter. I can do a lot of different things. And you know, I step outside on a windy day. I don't worry about it as much as I used to. <laughs> Visit Sam's Inn on West Shore Road, Warwick for home-style cooking. Thursday through Sunday, try Sam's Prime Rib Dinner with complimentary salad bar. And all day, Sunday's family-style chicken or pot roast dinner starting at just $11.95. Sam's Inn, 2227 West Shore Road, Warwick. Take a close look at the Toyota Fall Savings Event, and you'll see that the payments are really, really small. Get a really small $239 a month lease payment on a Tacoma 4x4 with no cost maintenance. Hurry, the savings end October 31st. Toyota, let's go places. Your time now 
is about 6:10. Looking at our future cast this morning over our hurricane barrier camera in Providence. Things nice and quiet there, and roadways in good shape this morning. We've been on the lookout for fog, but so far so good. 50 degrees, calm winds, humidity at about 90% this morning. Our conditions very quiet here in southern New England. Continuing to monitor major hurricane this morning, uh, bearing down on Bermuda. Nicole, the name of this storm and the eye of this storm well defined as it makes its way towards Bermuda. They're seeing tropical storm force conditions right now. Hurricane conditions expected uh, through the morning and early afternoon as a category four hurricane, 130 mile an hour sustained winds. Very unusual for Bermuda to get a hurricane of this strength passing near or very close to it. So it could be a devastating impacts for them. Some of the reports of buoys out uh, near the center of that storm reporting 30 to 40 foot waves with that hurricane. Your full future cast will talk about whether some of those higher wave heights will reach our coastline from that storm that's coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Michelle. Tom Brady's homecoming this Sunday at Gillette. One of his former teammates giving you a chance to go to the big game. Retired offensive lineman Matt Lights raffling off four VIP tickets to this weekend's game. Those raffle tickets, $10 a piece. The money raised will go to the Light Foundation, which provides scholarships and other programs for at-risk youth in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. You can buy tickets online at BradyNationRaffle.com. New at 6 a.m., Taunton police tell us they've arrested a woman they say was uh, dealing drugs, including the powerful opiate fentanyl. According to the Taunton Gazette, 33-year-old Elizabeth Resendiz was brought to the police station and was searched by a female officer. That's when police say they found a baggie with more than 7 grams of fentanyl and a small cylinder filled with prescription pills all hidden inside of her bra. She's charged with possession with intent to distribute. More local coverage coming up on Eyewitness News this morning. After the break, dozens of drivers for Amazon are now out of a job because of a new background check policy. Why critics say it's discriminatory. Plus, Bruins back on the ice tonight to start the regular season in Ohio. We'll have a preview of their matchup against the Blue Jackets. You're watching Eyewitness News. It is coverage you can count on. Here's today's morning message brought to you by Cumberland Farms. Hi, I'm Melissa from Lincoln, and I'm here with my friends at Cumberland Farms. Good morning, Rhode Island. Send your morning message to WPRI.com.